apologize to the member for Ottawa Centre, who I have to now interrupt because it is 10:15 uh, and it's time for member statements. I recognize the member for Flamborough Landbrook. Good morning, Speaker. This morning, I would like to recognize a member of my riding. Last week, the City of Hamilton held its 28th annual Senior of the Year Awards, and Flamborough Glanbrook resident Margaret Robertson was a nominee. The Senior of the Year Award program celebrates seniors aged 65 and older who contribute their time and their talents in service to enrich the social, cultural, or civic life of those in our community. Margaret's commitment to the Flamborough area has been evident for years. She established and maintained Paws Wild Tea Room for 32 years, a place enjoyed by so many in our community. She was chair of the Waterdown BIA, where she led the growth of the Victorian Festival. Margaret is also a founding member of the Rotary Club of Flamborough Morning, an organization that provides service in our area. Along with these various roles, Margaret has also volunteered her time to work with Flamborough Connects and the Food with Grace Waterdown Food Bank. She has truly been influential and much loved in our community. My congratulations go out to all of the nominees and a special thank you to Margaret for all that you have done and continue to do. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Temesca Ming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I guess I, I'll call this a tale of two phones. We all remember the day that the Premier got up and gave, gave his personal cell phone in the House, and if you have a problem, call me, and that, that's a great marketing strategy. But everyone, all, especially on the government side, especially Premiers and Ministers, have, also have government phones, and government business should be done on government phones. That's a pretty simple concept. But now, there, it's come to light that there, there are long periods of time where the Premier of this province did not use a government phone. So you would, you would, I don't think that the Premier of the province would not conduct any business in those periods. So there is business being conducted, it stands to reason, on his personal cell phone. We are bringing a motion forward this afternoon to, to, to try and push the government to, or the Premier, to release his personal cell phone records so that the people of Ontario, so he can be open and accountable to the people of Ontario, which he promised to be. Um, the government has now moved a motion to try and stop that. But let's be clear. Government business, whether it's on a personal or a government phone, should be viewed by the people, and we implore the Premier to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Whitby. The Ontario government is providing over $4.9 million to help create 26 supportive housing units at the refuge in Oshawa that will support youth experiencing homelessness. Located at uh, 357 Simcoe Street South, in Oshawa, the two-story converted school building will include studio apartments as well as four accessible units, Speaker. I believe that affordable, accessible and suitable housing is essential for healthy communities within the region of Durham. It underpins the quality of life for people in Durham at every stage of their lives. Speaker, I look forward to continued collaboration with the members of Durham Regional Council as together we ensure that local communities within the region continue to be safe, healthy and caring, as well as sustainable for future generations. Speaker John Henry, the Regional Chair of Durham Region and Chief Executive Officer, had this to say about the new funding for the refuge. On behalf of the region, I'd like to extend a sincere thank you to the province for this investment. It signifies our shared vision of creating safe, welcoming and caring communities for all. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Speaker, I have a message this morning for Prime Minister Trudeau about ongoing horrors in Gaza and in Israel. I believe the Prime Minister must join those around the world demanding the release of all hostages and demanding a ceasefire now. 
Without question, those responsible for the unspeakable atrocities committed against 1,400 Israelis on October 7th must face justice. But justice is not achieved by levelling entire Palestinian neighbourhoods, bombing border crossings, healthcare facilities and critical infrastructure, killing entire extended families, including heart-rending numbers of children. Speaker, over the weekend, 19 families in Ottawa were grieving loved ones lost in Gaza. One woman, Hala Asher, was grieving 77 relatives, Speaker, from ages 1 to 61. This is madness, Speaker, pure madness. Half the politician of Gaza are children. They never voted for Hamas, and they weren't even born when Hamas was elected in 2006. Prime Minister Trudeau, do those children deserve to die? Will you speak up for them? That's what thousands of people were saying in my city yesterday, in the streets of Ottawa. Will you call for a ceasefire, for the release of all the hostages, for the siege of Gaza to finally end, and for the immediate start of negotiations between Palestinians and Israelis so they can live in peace. They deserve to. Please speak up, sir. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. I am very pleased to rise in the House today to talk about Doug Hunt, a pillar of the Brantford Brant community and new Guinness Book of World Records holder, known to many in Brantford Brant as Doug the Great. Doug managed to take 14 continuous forward steps atop stilts measuring 55 feet and weighing 125 pounds apiece. This achievement marks Doug's third stilt walking Guinness record. Doug the Great broke the record on Saturday to mark the 10th anniversary of the new and upgraded Wayne Gretzky Sports Centre. His walk was one of the main events of the anniversary ceremony, and he had a huge crowd cheering him on. In addition to making history once again in Brantford, Doug's stilt walking team used the walk to raise money for participation support services, an incredible organization that supports adults with physical disabilities and complex needs to live as independently as possible. Despite challenges from dangerous winds, Doug stuck by his motto of never giving up and always taking that next step. Doug the Great is a shining example of perseverance and tenacity and a true role model for Brantford Brant to try and emulate. All of Brantford Brant is proud of you, Doug, although I'm not sure you needed 55-foot tall stilts to be taller than me. Thank you very much, Speaker. Doug the Great. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Speaker, it's now been a year and a half since 9,000 actor commercial actors have been unlawfully locked out of work by the ICA, Institute of Canadian Agencies. As I've raised in this House, the ICA wants to cut wages up to 60 per cent and eliminate benefits and retirement plans. They're not bargaining in good faith and are using scab replacement labour. The Ford Conservatives talk a lot about the affordability crisis. What about locked-out actors whose livelihoods have been taken away from them? How do you expect them to survive? The Ford government refuses to ban scab replacement labour, which is getting in the way of a fair bargaining process. Not only that, the Conservatives are giving business through government-paid advertising to the very agencies that are treating commercial actors so poorly. The government says they are working for workers, but their actions show otherwise. There's more. TVO CMG workers have been on strike for fair wages for fair wage increases for nine weeks. After a decade of their real wages falling due to the rising cost of living and inflation, workers simply cannot afford to see their real wages fall anymore. Yet they are being asked to accept another three years of below inflation wage increases. TVO is a public broadcaster, so the government itself is the employer here. They have the direct ability to intervene, and yet they don't. And here's the thing no one understands. The workers are asking for binding arbitration, a neutral third party to resolve this, and even that the government refuses. Binding arbitration have been offered to other groups. Why not TVOCMG? Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, October has been a very exciting month in my riding of Carleton, particularly in the communities of Riverside South and Finley Creek. <clears throat> The Ottawa Catholic School Board broke ground on not one, but two new Catholic elementary schools that hope to have their doors open by September 2024. Even before
before I was first elected in 2018, it was made very clear to me on the campaign trail how badly the communities in my riding needed schools to keep up with the rapid growth. It was by far the number one issue in my riding of Carleton. And since the 2018 election, we have received more than $211 million in funding for the building or expansion of nine schools in Carleton alone. These new schools in Finley Creek and Riverside South will each provide 507 student spaces and 39 daycare spaces. But a new school is more than a building with capacity and state-of-the-art technology. It will be a place where, ch where children will learn and feel comfortable, make lifelong friends with their peers, forming relationships with dedicated staff and teachers, and creating a foundation of childhood memories that will stay with them forever. A groundbreaking for a new school is exciting, but it will be even more exciting to visit two new schools full of children as their local MPP in September 2024. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Essex. Mr. Speaker, I have an update on all of the fantastic building that's going on in Essex County. In Bell River, we're building a 160-unit seniors' home. It's a state-of-the-art home. It's going to allow people to age in place. In Kingsville, we're building a JK to grade 12 school. When it opens up, it's going to welcome hundreds of happy students. In Amherstburg, they're building lots of residential units, not one, not two, not three, but four new, brand new residential complexes that's going to make it possible for people to retire in Amherstburg and also for people to start a family in Amherstburg. And in Essex, we're expanding Highway 3 from two lanes to four lanes. That's going to help com commuters get from one part of Essex County to the other safer and faster. It's going to help our greenhouse growers get their product to market faster and help grow our industry. There's so much building going on in Essex County, Mr. Speaker. I can't remember a time when so much excellent progress was being made. I want to thank the Premier for his policies and for investing in Essex County. Let's keep it going. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Oxford. Hey. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Royal Agriculture Winter Fair is a time where farmers, growers, producers, and homesteaders from all over Canada descend on Toronto to celebrate the best in farming, agriculture, and local food. Each year, an artist is commissioned to create the official poster for the fair, and I'm proud to rise today to congratulate Oxford artist and Aggie Armstrong on being chosen to create this year's poster. It is truly an honor and a privilege for Aggie, who was moved to Oxford County when she was 18 from Manila, Philippines. It's no surprise why she was chosen. With her experience in both Manila and rural Norwich Township, along with her distinctive artistic style, she is a perfect fit for the 101st Fair Poster. It's entitled The Magic Voyage of Celebration. In her words, she wanted to show how growers and producers take their vocation with pride and how the fruits of their labor need to be elevated, celebrated by everyone. She hopes that people see the beauty of agriculture and husbandry and that farmers should be proud of all the work that they do. I believe, believe this is the spirit of agriculture in Ontario and I encourage everyone to take a look at Aggie's poster and previous work. The 101st Agriculture Winter Fair will take place from November the 3rd to the 12th at Exhibition Place. And I once again would like to congratulate Aggie Armstrong for her beautiful work of art and making Oxford proud. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Member statements. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Before I ask the members to...